The Understanding Conspiracy Channel host, Paul, interviewed a Ph.D. psychologist who had worked with schizophrenic patients in hospitals and prisons, and it was a fascinating interview, so I've linked that. And this doctor came to the conclusion that the voices that these schizophrenic patients heard were literally demonic entities. The doctor concluded that they were real also. He observed patterns associated with the voices didn't follow hallucinations because the messages were not random, but rather always negative and accusing. The doctor uh, had problems in his career because the mental health system discouraged him asking the patients what the voices were actually saying to them. The mental health system only encouraged treatment via medication with psychotropic drugs, which makes the patients into zombies. The doctor also said that the drugs helped to open people up to demonic possession and that the mental health system's explanation for the cause of schizophrenia was a chemical imbalance in the brain, but that there's no objective way that they measure that chemical imbalance in the brain. This doctor also said that he had an experience himself which was supernatural while working with an inmate. And I personally have known someone who had severe bipolar disorder and had hallucinations. And this person was highly intelligent and came from a wealthy high society family. The grandfather had a variety of camellia named after him. You know, that sort of garden club thing, which is apparently a big deal in the South. But looking back, I believe that those family were witches. Um, I met them, they acted very strange. And I think that they were Freemasons. The father uh, had been a partner, uh, owner of an insurance company, but when my son and I had tried to get info about that company, it was very sketch. The father had been given an honorary professor title at UGA and got paid a hefty salary to teach one class uh, once a week as a consultant or something like that, which made me think of Gridiron. Uh, this person and their three siblings all graduated from Westminster, which is the most exclusive private school in Atlanta. But I'll just tell you, this whole class thing, it's not all it's cracked up to be. In this case, there was something very dark going on. I also think this person was DID and abused as a child. They could perform exceptionally well, mentally and socially, usually. They could be very charismatic, but would also act extremely bizarre sometimes, also on psychotropic drugs. And they said when they were first diagnosed, it was because they were wandering around the UGA campus in an hallucination, thinking that they were a specific king. And I can't remember which uh, one, but it's significant because of what I'm going to talk about next. So this person was broken, definitely, mentally and spiritually, and I believe intentionally. And I didn't know then what I know now, but looking back, I remembered that one time they literally spoke to me in my grandfather's voice, which completely freaked me out. So I dismissed it back then. I regret that now. But now I also believe that this person was possessed. So thinking about that and the interview with this PhD, I remembered reading about past kings, a lot of past kings, who exhibit similar behavior. And I'm sure you guys can think of a lot of examples, because there are a lot of examples. But uh, I'm thinking that um, these kings were possessed, and that it was done intentionally by the bloodline witches. It seems that some of them may have been more broken and out of control than others. So I'm just going to talk about one example, even though there are plenty of examples. And I'm going to read what is written about him historically to support this theory. And that's King Charles VI of France, known as Charles the Mad. And he was King of France from 1380 to 1422, so that's a 42-year's reign of a person who alternated between periods of mental instability and lucidity. He had psychotic episodes throughout his life and reign and was placed under what they're calling as regency of his uncles. And his uncles were Anjou and Bourbon. And they kind of looked after things for him during his psychotic episodes. But the Anjou and Bourbon, they're high bloodline families that Gary Wayne writes about, who are related to Nephilim or believe that they are. 
So this Charles the Sixth of France would have episodes where he didn't know his own name. He would do battle with his own knights, thinking that they were his enemy. Times where he refused to take care of his own hygiene, which reminds me of Nebuchadnezzar. But the most bizarre hallucination was him thinking that he was made of glass. Literally thinking that he himself was made of glass. If what we read about what they've written about him is true. And another thing I read is that he almost caught on fire at this ball des ardents, which is French for ball of burning man. And at this ball, he, he and some others dressed up as wild men in costumes of linen cloth sewn onto their bodies and soaked in resinous wax or pitch to hold a covering of frazzled hemp so that they appeared shaggy and hairy from head to foot, which is crazy stuff, but those witchy themes have carried forward, haven't they? I don't believe we're dealing with sane people at all in the current leadership. I think they're broken spiritually and mentally, and I think they are possessed intentionally. And interestingly, Daenerys Targaryen, mother of dragons in Game of Thrones, her father was written into that story as the Mad King. Thanks for listening.